close attention to those yeah. prices. So I feel like that's smart because like that's like yeah, well, why not invest it? You know, I don't have to pay to. Yeah. So if you decide that you want to go with this, like, let's look at the enrollment form real fast. That is the enrollment form. You would fill this out. Now I'm old school. I don't like you know like doing stuff online as a whole bunch. Like I don't like putting my my bank account number and stuff yeah. online. So. I just feel more comfortable doing it this way. I, I know a lot of people, they just do it all online. Yeah, and that's fine. You just print out and send it Yeah, I just print this off, I fill it out, and I mail it in. Yeah. And so, so not too bad. And so, but this just shows you what you have to fill out. You know, and if we show what I was talking about earlier, look at what it says right there. Uh, you have the option, uh, full dividend reinvestment. You know, you can do, you know, pay dividends, you know, or, you know, all in cash. So we'll send it out to you. Or you can do a partial, you know, and then you have to put in, you know, like your percentage, whatever you want. So I always do the full dividend reinvestment because I don't need it right now. And so, and I like that idea of that compounding interest. I'm just buying more shares each time. And yeah, so, because do. honestly, a lot of your profit is probably going to come from reinvesting the dividend. Yeah. And so I always tell, you know, people always go that route. Is sometimes awesome. you find buy stocks to see if they have high dividends. Like yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, like I own one uh, stock right now, and, and they've been kind of hit hard here recently. Uh, but there is called Omega Healthcare, uh, and uh, their uh, dividend. I mean, they're known primarily for the dividend. I mean, uh, and right now their dividend is like over nine something percent. It's nice. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, not bad. But that's what they're known for. So your profit is primarily going to come from that dividend. So as soon as they hit big, you're like. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just reinvesting the dividend. I mean, I'll probably hold this company for several years. And then once I feel like I have a good margin, you know, I'll trim some off, you know, that 25 or 30 percent. I mean, I think it's a good company overall. It's just every company, they go through different cycles. So, you know, they have certain projections that they have to meet, like profit-wise, and they fall a little short. Sometimes their stock price gets hit, you know, because of that. And so, How many years do you think it only takes for you to, like, it's on I would say if you want to, you know, you should hold on to a company, in my opinion, at least, you know, at least five to ten years. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like at a least. Morning, like kind of Unless they give you enough reason where you can sell it. Like, if I, if I have 25 or 30 percent profit, I'm not going to sell all of it necessarily, but I'll, I'll take, you know, I'll calculate about what, what my profit is. You know, I'll, I'll think about, let's say if I invest $10,000 in a company and it's up 30 percent. I will just basically try to take just enough off where I'm back to around that original ten thousand, you know, and take that the rest profit, and then I'll reinvest it. So let's take it looks like you have, you know, like that thirty percent of what you put in. If you take off all of it, how are they gonna charge you a big fee for it? Oh no, well, I mean, they, they do. It depends on the, the the company. I mean, like if you notice there, it tells you about how much they charge for processing fee. For you, you, it's fifteen bucks. So for that one transaction, fifteen dollars, and then they take out twelve cents per share that you own. Now, if you only, you know, if you, if you sell 50 shares, 12 cents for each share, I mean, is not an enormous amount, yeah. you know, uh, but, I mean, they are going to get some of their fees. So, and, uh, and if you look down here, it also gives you some other options. You can decide that, you know what, I just want Exxon Mobil or whatever uh, for my traditional IRA. Now, me personally, I don't suggest this because I don't think you should just have your entire, you know, like retirement in one company. Because if they go under, you're in some trouble. That's why I think the index fund is a lot better. Because you're spreading out your risk. You're, you're diversifying. This is why I like to choose individual stocks just for, for my own pleasure. I just enjoy doing that. I, I like the challenge of finding the, the company you know, where I feel like I can make profit. Uh, I bought a company a while back. It was, it was one of my first uh, companies I invested in. It's called One Oak. Uh, and One Oak uh, is a gas company in Oklahoma. Uh, and... You know, I bought it, you know, when, when oil prices were still high, natural gas was still high. Um, and then, so it, it went back and forth. And then when the, the, you know, the oil industry and the natural gas industry, you know, got hit hard, that price dropped significantly. So what did I do? I loaded up on more shares. And so then eventually it started going back up and I just sold everything and I ended up with a $20,000 profit from that one company. You know, and so it was nice. I mean, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I reinvested the dividend all those years. How long did you say again? Um, I owned the company, I want to say, for about four years, four three years. or four years, give or, I think four, you know, and then I sold it, but, uh, but it gave me a reason to. It went up high enough. So let's look at Vanguard real fast. And 
What I'm going to do real fast is go back here because on uh, one of the articles that I have, creating your own blog, uh, I actually have some of the links there too. So this would be like the targeted 2040 plan. That's the plan that I have. And so and it'll take you to Vanguard. It tells you a little bit about uh, that plan. So this thing is under right now? So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, but I mean, when I bought shares of that, it was a lot lower than 35. So I'm still up, so I mean. Uh, but uh, for today, it's down, you know, eight cents. So, I mean, and that's gonna happen. I mean, it's gonna go back and forth in there. But when I bought in, it's like 33 some shares, so. Okay, so uh, still Oh yeah, yeah, and so and this is all long term because this is in my Roth IRA. I won't be touching this at least until 2060 or or 2040. So at least you know. So but if you look over there, it kind of gives you kind of uh, you know the minimum. So if you wanted to get into this fund, uh, it's a thousand dollars, thousands of dollars that you have to you know open your account with them. You know, uh, it also will tell you the percentage of fees what you pay. Vanguard is primarily known. For you know having low fees, that's why a lot of people invest in Vanguard products because their fees are low, uh, and I like that you know and, and because you do have to be careful because not every mutual fund you know is you know the same you know because and I will tell you that if you're not careful like if you just go to a regular bank in some cases you may be paying a lot more fees than you know than you would through Vanguard and I just like doing things myself I don't like relying on other people but if you look on there. You know, it's like 0.16% is what you pay. Now, if you decide to set up your account and you get all your statements electronically, they weigh it because there's a $20 year fee for them mailing you the stuff. If you just go to electronic and say, just email it to me, then, you know, you don't have to pay $20, which I like, you know, because, I mean, this company really is trying to save you on the fees. I mean, that's what they're known for. Uh, and, and right there, you see the price and performance. Uh, it does pay a dividend, you know, this, and there's also capital gain that you get. Uh, but what I really wanted to show you was where it says, high. Point. what's that? High. It's not bad. I mean, 2%, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, uh, you know, for the dividend. And uh, if you click on portfolio management, it shows you how they break up your money. So since I invest in this 2040 fund, there's actually four different index, uh, index funds or mutual funds that they invest my money in. So they take my money. Let's say I invest, you know, a thousand dollars. They're going to take that thousand dollars, and then they're going to go and invest in each of these individual mutual funds. And you know, so they're spreading my money out. So they they're putting it into the total stock market index fund, which is you know some of the big corporations that you see here in the United States. I mean, there are thousands. They put that in there. They uh, some uh, a percentage, and you see right here, fifty-two percent. They put into this fund. They put 34.3% into the, uh, the International Stock Index Fund. And so they're just spreading it out, you know, where they're putting your money. So basically, it increases your chance of, you know, making a profit because you're diversifying. You know, so not all your money is in one specific area. That I like. This is a little bit more conservative in my opinion, but I do this because it's my retirement. I, you know, I want to make sure that I'm going to make, you know, a decent profit. And so, and down here, let's see here. You know, they'll go into more detail, like who actually runs the fund and stuff, you know, the management. And then let me show you. Let's go with distributions. So they kind of show, like, when they pay the dividend and stuff. Uh, that You can go there to fees and the minimum. They show you what it takes to get started. You know, uh, they uh, also, you know, you can look, you know, go back and look at uh, the price and performance. And so it'll kind of give you an idea. I like looking at that 52 week high, 52 week low, it kind of gives you a gauge of like where it's been in that 52 weeks. And so like when I buy individual stocks, I kind of look at that. Like, you know, because let's say, you know, Nike was at $60 a share for the high, but then they're down at like 45, and, but you know, at, at for their low. But right now, currently they're at, you know, 48. I would still say that they're still towards that low. So that may be a decent buying point potentially. You know, I don't want to buy when they're at their all-time all highs. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. So that's. I mean, I don't know. If that's necessarily professional or anything, but that's kind of how I gauge things a little bit. Yeah. You know, on there. And then it'll, right here, it'll show you how well it's done. You know, over the years. And so, if you look at 10 years, so if you go back to 2007, 
And if you invested that $10,000, you notice that we had a financial crisis in around the 2009 range, you know, uh, what we call the Great Recession. So people's money dropped significantly. But they didn't take the money out. And then, you know, the market over time, and look at it, what it would be now, right around. So if you invested $10,000 back in 2007, it would be around 17000 something now. You know, because, you know, it, some years are going to be worse than others. Uh, and, you know, so, I mean, you have to kind of write it out. That's why I say, you know, don't invest money that you may have to take out the next day. I mean, you have to give it time. And so, uh, so but this is just so one thing. you invested 10, you would have been $7,000 up right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and this, it'll break down, like, percentage. Like, like this year alone, if you look right here, that 18.21, this year has been really good for the stock market. You know, and so over this stock has gone up over 18% just this year. You know, so that's not bad. Now it could go down next year. You know, so there, I mean, there's always you know that chance. So, uh, but since its conception, and it shows you right here, and this fund, uh, you know, you know, showed, you know, it started back in 2006. So in the in this 10 year or so years, it's uh, averaged a little over seven something percent. You're not going to get that if you go to a bank. I mean. But if you get a 10-year, you know, uh, CD, you know, at a bank, you're probably going to get one percent, one and a half. You can't even keep up with inflation, you know, doing that. So, so that's why I would say, you know, investing in the stock market is necessary, you know, if you really want to be able to retire. And so, so that's just one example. Uh, we'll we'll wrap this up in just a second. Uh, last thing I'll, I'll show you uh, is that you know the Wells Fargo. That's another agency, you know, that's similar, you know, to ComputerShare. You can buy stock there. So you go to the website, you click on a direct, you know, a purchase plan, and they have a list of a variety of different companies. And so let's just click, and you can go to, let's look at there. Um, you got General Mills. I'll just click on that for argument's sake. So this tells you the minimum. So if you want to invest in that company, you have to have at least $250. And then you, the automatic thing, you know, you know, they do it, you know, $50. You would click on the prospectus and that would go over all the details when it comes to like fees and, and that type stuff. You know, uh, and that, this form here, the account authorization form, that's the form that you fill out and then you mail it in, you know, to, to buy the shares. Uh, so, I mean, these are, I mean, it takes time. I mean, you have to really, you know, take the time and look at these. You know, look at those fees, you know, before you actually make a decision. And so, but I would say the first 10000 which take a while, first 10000 in my opinion, you should be investing, you know, most likely in a Roth or a traditional IRA. You know, getting that set up, remember, it's a $1,000 minimum. So you're going to have to save a little while before you, you know, uh, you know, put that, you know, create your account there. But to, to me, that is the good first step. You know, because it's well diversified. You saw how they put your money uh, allocated in all different areas, thousands of stocks. It's a lot safer. I mean, it is going to go up and down. I mean, that, that's just going to happen. That's the nature of it. You know, but you put it in there. You don't touch it. And then you just try to find a system where maybe you contribute a certain amount each year. You know, maybe it's not the 5500 Maybe it's, you know, uh, 600 or 500 you know. Uh, and, you know, so whatever it is. And then as you get, you know, owners start making more money, obviously uh, start investing more money in that. But once you reach that $10,000, then I would say, you know what, now I can play around. Uh, I love this show, it's called Mad Money. Uh, Jim Cramer is a, you know, the host of it, it's on uh, CNBC. And so he always says, first 10,000, you invest in, in a, a mutual fund or index fund. And then he says, the Mad Money, which is what this show is called, that's when you start investing in the individual stocks. Because then you can take a little bit more risk, you know, uh, you know and invest you know, individually. Now, I will tell you, I did not get started off that way because, you know, I learned this as I was going. I started off investing in one company. I, I, I invested in one of them. I didn't have a lot I put in there, but that's what I started with. And I did that for a little while, and then I bought a couple more, a couple more. Uh, and, and I have CDs as well. You know, I had it all spread out in the different areas. And so uh, it didn't happen overnight. And so my big question is, what questions do you have for me related to this? Is there anything that you're not sure about? Or need a little bit more clarification. I think I asked a lot of questions, so I think. I... Yeah. You know, and I would say, you know, I mean, this is one workshop. You try to cover, you know, as much as you can within that short period of time. You know, I mean, there's a lot more learning that needs to be done out there. Uh, I will always say that you can always stop by my office if you're not sure about something. Stop by my office. We'll talk about it. I mean, if I don't know the answer, I can try to find the answer for you. 
That's uh, that's all I got. Yep. So, questions? All right. So I'll have you fill out that stuff, and then that's it.